I was planning to do another 1970s calculator video looking at this rather fantastic Burroughs C6202 pre-programmed printing calculator but I'd been playing with it for a few minutes trying out some of the programs when all of a sudden as it was printing out one of the programs I heard the unmistakable sound of stripping gears and the drum on the printer stopped revolving bad times if I open the cover you'll see that I've already removed said printer for examination and hopefully repair. It wasn't such a surprise to me that there was something wrong with this machine. When it arrived there were screws missing, the circuit boards and keyboard were all loose and not seated correctly, and the whole thing looked like someone had started repairing it and then run out of time or interest, so I was actually really chuffed that the electronics were ok or at least as far as I could tell with the limited testing I did before it conked out. I'm actually rather pleased it was a mechanical failure because that's right up my street. When I started researching these printers, and there's a more or less identical one in the Adler calculator that I featured in a previous video, I found out that it's an EP102 made in Japan by Sua Seikosha or from what I've read it was a subsidiary of that company Shinsu Seiki who actually made the printer and it was Shinsu Seiki that became the now famous Epson in the early 1980s. I've already had a look at the printer but I'll strip it again so we can look at the drive mechanism and then I have to decide exactly what I'm going to do with it. First to come off is the ribbon and the entire assembly it sits on. There are a couple of small screws, one on each side, a circlip holding the rod that lifts the ribbon assembly to change the printing colour, and also a spring that connects to the ribbon advancing lever. It's best to remove this first because it makes it easier to access the two screws. And with that off it's just a case of removing the two screws that hold each side cover in place, and we're in. This gear here is the offending one. You've got the motor pinion at the bottom which drives the strip gear and on the back of the strip gear is a smaller gear that drives this final gear that's attached to the number drum. The strip gear doesn't look too bad at the moment but if I rotate it a little it's in a pretty sorry state. It appears to be made of a material that's decomposed because you can literally break teeth off it with no effort at all. Anyway, while we've got the printer in this state we can take a look at how it works. There's a magnet in the gear that's attached to the number drum with the sensor down below it, so it will have a position reference on each revolution. Then there's a pair of magnets and a sensor on the end of the motor shaft, which look like they'll tell the unit when to fire and release each hammer. The motor is this contraption on the other side, which doesn't look much like the kind of motor we're used to, but it is the motor. It feels like a six pole permanent magnet motor of some kind. One revolution of the motor advances the number drum by one character, and there are 13 characters round the drum. These little hammers are the ones that press the ribbon and paper against the letters on the drum to print each character. And down at the side here are two solenoids. The outer one raises the ribbon to print in red, and the other one activates the mechanism to advance the paper. I had commented when I did the Adler calculator video that I wondered how they managed to sync the hammers with the constantly revolving number drum. I figured there must be a set of solenoids that fired each hammer at the correct time, but it's a bit cleverer than that. On the inside of the printer there's this metal section that's basically the shaft of the motor. If I rotate it, you'll see there's a raised shoulder across the width of the shaft. So, when the first of the pair of magnets on the far end of the motor shaft triggers the sensor, and the shaft will be in this position at that time, a tiny solenoid will push one of these levers towards the motor shaft. The motor shaft then carries on turning, striking the little lever and giving it a good close. The other end of the lever is connected to one of the hammers, and so a character is printed. When the second magnet passes the sensor, the solenoid is switched off and the little lever returns to its rest position. As the system is driven through a set of gears, this guarantees that the hammers will strike the drum at the right time, assuming everything is set up correctly. 
However, because my gear is stripped, the motor will have gone out of sync with the number drum. But good news! There are some alignment marks on each gear. One on the motor pinion here, and one on the stripped gear here. And finally, a raised dot on the drum gear here, that aligns with a hole in the side frame and the stripped gear. Unfortunately, I think someone has tampered with this machine before I got it. It was printing fine, well, until it wasn't printing at all. But I suspect that the number drum position has been adjusted to compensate for incorrectly aligned gears, because if I align everything to the marks, the hammers will strike halfway down each character. Anyway, that's a problem to solve once I've got a replacement gear. I've already ordered a pair of gears of the correct size and pitch, and when they arrive, I'll have to make some sort of hub to mount them together as one, and also create the correct bore size. I got what I could, but the two gears have different bore sizes, so the smaller one will have to be opened out, and a hub that I'll have to make, inserted and glued in place. That's about it for now. I'll hopefully post an update once I've got the parts and I've got the printer back working again. After that I should be able to demo the calculator itself. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future video.